How do continuous feeders differ from discontinuous feeders? Continuous feeders, also known as filter feeders, are aquatic animals that constantly feed by having water filled with food particles, e. g. small plankton, or fishes, entering through the mouth. Continuous feeders do not need a storage area, such as a stomach, for food. Discontinuous feeders must hunt for food on a regular basis. They need a storage area to house food until it is digested. How do rodents, rabbits, and hares digest cellulose? Unlike cows, which have a rumen to digest cellulose, rodents, rabbits, and hares have a cecum, a large pouch to digest cellulose with the assistance of microorganisms. The cecum is located at the junction between the small and large intestines. It is impossible for these animals to regurgitate the contents of their stomachs. Like ruminants, because the cecum is located beyond the stomach. Instead, these animals pass their food through their digestive tract a second time by ingesting their feces. When feces pass through the digestive tract, it is possible for these animals to absorb the nutrients produced by the microorganisms in the cecum. What is the name of the bird that perches on the black rhinoceros's back? The bird, a relative of the starling, is called an oxpecker, a member of the Sternidae family. Found only in Africa, the yellow-billed oxpecker, Bufagus africanus wingspan. Is widespread over much of Western and Central Africa, while the red billed oxpecker, Bufagus erythroinkus wingspan, lives in Eastern Africa from the Red Sea to Natal. 7 to 8 in, 17 to 20 centimeters, long with a coffee brown body. The oxpecker feeds on more than 20 species of ticks that live in the height of the black rhinoceros. Dicerus bicornis, also called the hook-lipped rhino. The bird spends most of its time on the rhinoceros or on other animals. Such as the antelope, zebra, giraffe, or buffalo. The bird has even been known to roost on the body of its host. The relationship between the oxpecker and the rhinoceros is called mutualism. The bird feeds on the rhinoceros's ticks, benefiting both the bird and the rhinoceros. In addition, the oxpecker, having much better eyesight than the nearsighted rhinoceros, alerts its host with its shrill cries and flight when danger approaches. What are the steps of food processing for animals? The first step is for animals to ingest food. The food is then broken down via the digestive process into molecules that the organism can absorb for energy. 
Once the food is digested, it is absorbed through the digestive tract to provide energy for the organism. The final step of food processing is elimination. During elimination, undigested material is passed out of the digestive tract. What is a goiter? A goiter is an enlargement of the thyroid gland caused by hypothyroidism, too little thyroxine. An insufficient dietary intake of iodine is a common cause of goiter. What accounts for the different colors of bird feathers? The vivid color of feathers is of two kinds, one, pigmentary, and two, structural. Red, orange and yellow feathers are colored by pigments called lipochromes deposited in the feather barbules as they are formed. Black, brown, and gray colors are from another pigment, melanin. Blue feathers depend not on pigment but on scattering of shorter wavelengths of light by particles within the feather. These are structural feathers. Green colors are almost always a combination of yellow pigment and blue feather structure. Another kind of structural color is the beautiful iridescent color of many birds which ranges from red, orange, copper, and gold to green, blue, and violet. Iridescent color is based on interference that causes light waves to reinforce, weaken, or eliminate each other. Iridescent colors may change with the angle of view. Who discovered the first known hormone? The British physiologists William Bayliss, 1860-1924, and Ernest Starling, 1866-1927, discovered secretin in 1902. They used the term hormone, from the Greek word hormon, meaning to set in motion, to describe the chemical substance they had. Discovered that stimulated an organ at a distance from the chemical site of origin. Their famous experiment using anesthetized dogs demonstrated that dilute hydrochloric acid mixed with partially digested food activated a chemical substance in the duodenum. This activated substance, secretin, was released into the bloodstream and came in contact with cells of the pancreas. In the pancreas it stimulated secretion of digestive juice into the intestine through the pancreatic duct. What is the function of the endocrine system? The endocrine system is the main chemical regulating system of an organism. Hormones, chemicals made and secreted by endocrine glands or neurosecretory cells, are the main messengers of the endocrine system. Hormones are transported in the blood to all parts of the body and interact with target cells. 
cells that contain hormone receptors, and they regulate metabolic rate, growth, maturation, and reproduction. Why did dinosaurs become extinct? There are many theories as to why dinosaurs disappeared from Earth about 65 million years ago. Scientists debate whether dinosaurs became extinct gradually or all at once. The gradualists believe that the dinosaur population steadily declined at the end of the Cretaceous period. Numerous reasons have been proposed for this. Some claim the dinosaur's extinction was caused by biological changes that made them less competitive with other organisms. Especially the mammals that were just beginning to appear. Overpopulation has been argued, as has the theory that mammals ate so. Many dinosaur eggs that dinosaur reproduction was irrevocably harmed. Others believe that disease everything from rickets to constipation wiped the dinosaurs out. Changes in climate, continental drift, volcanic eruptions, and shifts in Earth's axis. Orbit, and slash or magnetic field have also been held responsible. The catastrophists argue that a single disastrous event caused the extinction not only of the dinosaurs but also of a large number of other species that coexisted with them. In 1980 the American physicist Luis Alvarez, 1911-1988, and his geologist son Walter Alvarez, 1940, proposed that a large comet or meteoroid struck Earth 65 million years ago. They pointed out that there is a high concentration of the element iridium in the sediments at the boundary between the Cretaceous and Tertiary periods. Iridium is rare on Earth, so the only source of such a large amount of it had to be outer space. This iridium anomaly has since been discovered at over 50 sites around the world. In 1990 tiny glass fragments, which could have been caused by the extreme heat of an impact, were identified in Haiti. A 110 miles 177 kilometers wide crater in the Yucatan Peninsula, long covered by sediments, has been dated to 64.98 million years ago, making it a leading candidate for the site of this impact. A hit by a large extraterrestrial object, perhaps as much as 6 miles 9.3 kilometers wide, would have had a catastrophic effect upon the world's climate. Huge amounts of dust and debris would have been thrown into the atmosphere, reducing the amount of sunlight reaching the surface. Heat from the blast may also have caused large forest fires, which would have added smoke and ash to the air. Lack of sunlight would kill off plants and have a domino-like effect on other organisms in the food chain, including the dinosaurs. It is possible that the reason for the dinosaurs' extinction may have been a combination of both theories. The dinosaurs may have been gradually declining, for whatever reason. The impact of a large object from space merely delivered the coup de grace. The fact that dinosaurs became extinct has been cited as proof of their inferiority and that they were evolutionary failures. However, these animals flourished for 150 million years. 
By comparison, the earliest ancestors of humanity appeared only about 3 million years ago. Humans have a long way to go before they can claim the same sort of success as the dinosaurs. What is respiration? Respiration is the exchange of gases, oxygen and carbon dioxide, between an animal and its environment. There are three phases to the process of respiration, gas exchange 1, breathing. When an animal inhales oxygen and exhales carbon dioxide, 2, transport of gases via the blood. Circulatory system, to the body's tissues, and 3, at the cellular level. When the cells take in oxygen from the blood and in return add carbon dioxide to the blood. How does the dentition of animals reflect their diet? Herbivores have sharp incisors to bite off blades of grass and other plant matter. They also have a system of flat premolas and molars for grinding and crushing grasses and plant matter. Carnivores have pointed incisors and enlarged canine teeth to tear off pieces of meat. Their premolas and molars are jagged to aid in chewing flesh. Omnivores have non-specialized teeth to accommodate a diet of both plant material and animals. How are birds related to dinosaurs? Birds are essentially modified dinosaurs with feathers. Robert T. Backer, 1945, and John H. Ostrom, 1928. Did extensive research on the relationship between birds and dinosaurs in the 1970s and concluded that the bony structure of small dinosaurs was very similar to Archaeopteryx. The first animal classified as a bird, but that dinosaur fossils showed no evidence of feathers. They proposed that birds and dinosaurs evolved from the same source. What are some vertebrate endocrine glands and their hormones? There are 10 major endocrine glands in vertebrates. Fish and Wildlife Service What is the most successful and diverse group of terrestrial vertebrates? Birds, members of the class Aves, are the most successful of all terrestrial vertebrates. There are 28 orders of living birds with almost 10. 000 species distributed over almost the entire Earth. The success of birds is basically due to the development of the feather. How are animals classified based on what they eat?
Animals are classified based on whether they eat plants, other animals, or a combination of both. Animals that eat only plant matter are called herbivores. From the Latin herba, meaning green crop, and vorus, meaning devouring. Examples of herbivores are cattle, deer, and many aquatic species that eat algae. Animals that eat other animals are called carnivores. From the Latin carn, meaning flesh, and vorus, meaning devouring. Lions, sharks, snakes, and hawks are examples of carnivores. Animals that eat both plants and other animals are called omnivores. From the Latin omnis, meaning all and vorus, meaning devouring. Humans, crows, and raccoons are examples of omnivores. Are turtles endangered? Worldwide turtle populations have declined due to several reasons. Including habitat destruction, exploitation of species by humans for their eggs, leather, and meat, and they're becoming accidentally caught in the nets of fishermen. In particular danger are sea turtles, such as Kemp's Ridley sea turtle. Lepidoshellus kempii, which is believed to have a population of only a few hundred. Other threatened species include the Central American river turtle, Dermatemis mewii. The green sea turtle, Chelonia mitas, the leatherback sea turtle, Geochelone inifora, the desert tortoise. Gophorus agassizii, and the Galapagos tortoise. Geochelone elephant opus. Source, U.S. How are anabolic steroids harmful to those who use them? Anabolic, protein building. Steroids are drugs that mimic the effects of testosterone and other male sex hormones. They can build muscle tissue, strengthen bone, and speed muscle recovery following exercise or injury. They are sometimes prescribed to treat some types of anemia as well as osteoporosis in postmenopausal women. Anabolic steroids have become a lightning rod of controversy in competitive sports. The drugs are banned from most organized competitions because of the dangers. They pose to health and to prevent athletes from gaining an unfair advantage. Adverse effects of anabolic steroids include hypertension. Acne, edema, and damage to liver heart, and adrenal glands. Psychiatric symptoms can include hallucinations, paranoid delusions, and manic episodes. In men anabolic steroids can cause infertility, impotence, and premature balding. Women can develop masculine characteristics such as excessive hair growth. Male pattern balding disruption of menstruation, and deepening of the voice. Children and adolescents can develop problems in growing bones, leading to short stature. How does kidney dialysis remove waste products from the body?
damaged or diseased kidneys are not capable of removing toxic waste substances from the body. Kidney dialysis removes the nitrogenous waste and regulates the pH of the blood when the kidneys do not work. Blood is pumped from an artery through a series of tubes made of a permeable membrane and a dialysing solution. Urea and excess salts diffuse out of the blood as it circulates through the dialysing machine and are then discarded. Necessary ions diffuse from the dialysing solution back into the blood. The cleansed blood is then returned to the body. What are the main organs of the digestive system and their function? The digestive system includes the mouth, alimentary canal, or gastrovascular cavity. Esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine, and anus. The mouth is the opening through which food is ingested. In animals with a second opening for elimination, the digestive system contains an alimentary canal. A tube allowing for the passage of food from the mouth to the anus. In contrast, animals with only one opening have a gastrovascular cavity that serves as the site of digestive activities. The esophagus is another channel through which food passes on the way to the stomach. The stomach, or crop in certain species, such as birds, stores food and is the primary site of chemical digestion. Following digestion in the stomach where food is broken down with acid and enzymes. The food passes into the small intestine. Nutrients are absorbed via the intestine. Much shorter than the small intestine, though greater in diameter. Is the large intestine, also called the colon. Here, the solid material remaining after digestion is compacted and then eliminated via the anus. Are any other animals able to drink seawater? Birds and reptiles that live near the sea are also able to drink seawater. These animals have nasal salt glands near their eyes through which they excrete the excess quantities of salt solution. Why is Archaeopteryx important? Archaeopteryx is the first known bird. It had true feathers that provided insulation and allowed this animal to form scoops with its wings for catching prey. What was the typical lifespan of dinosaurs? The lifespan has been estimated at 75 to 300 years. Such estimates are educated guesses. From examination of the microstructure of dinosaur bones. Scientists have inferred that dinosaurs matured slowly and probably had proportionately long lifespans.
Are tortoises and terrapins the same as turtles? The terms turtle, tortoise, and terrapin are used for various members of the order Testudinas. From the Latin term testudo, meaning tortoise. In North American usage they are all correctly called turtles. The term tortoise is often used for land turtles. In British usage the term tortoise is the inclusive term. And turtle is only applied to aquatic members of the order. How do steroid hormones differ from non-steroid hormones? Steroid hormones such as estrogen and testosterone enter target cells and directly interact with the DNA in the nucleus. Non-steroid hormones such as adrenaline generally do not enter the target cell but instead bind to a receptor protein found on external cell membranes. This then causes a sequence of metabolic effects. What is the difference between type I and type 2 diabetes? Diabetes mellitus is a hormonal disease that occurs when the body cells are unable to absorb glucose from the blood. Type I is insulin dependent diabetes mellitus, IDDM. And type 2 is non-insulin dependent diabetes mellitus, NIDDM. In type I diabetes there is an absolute deficiency of insulin. In type 2 diabetes insulin secretion may be normal. But the target cells for insulin are less responsive than normal. What is the difference between type I and type 2 diabetes? Diabetes mellitus is a hormonal disease that occurs when the body cells are unable to absorb glucose from the blood. Type I is insulin dependent diabetes mellitus, IVDM. And type 2 is non-insulin dependent diabetes mellitus, NIDDM. In type I diabetes there is an absolute deficiency of insulin. In type 2 diabetes insulin secretion may be normal. But the target cells for insulin are less responsive than normal. What is the nervous system? The nervous system is an intricately organized, interconnected system of nerve cells that relays messages to and from the brain and spinal cord of an organism in vertebrates. It receives sensory input, processes the input, and then sends messages to the tissues and organs for an appropriate response. In vertebrates there are two parts to the nervous system, one, the central nervous system, consisting of the brain and spinal cord, and two, the peripheral system, 
consisting of nerves that carry signals to and from the central nervous system. What is the nervous system? The nervous system is an intricately organized, interconnected system of nerve cells that relays messages to and from the brain and spinal cord of an organism in vertebrates. It receives sensory input, processes the input, and then sends messages to the tissues and organs for an appropriate response. In vertebrates there are two parts to the nervous system, one, the central nervous system. Consisting of the brain and spinal cord, and two, the peripheral system. Consisting of nerves that carry signals to and from the central nervous system. How does the nervous system of invertebrates differ from that of vertebrates? The least complex nervous system is the nerve net of nadarians such as hydras. The nerve net is a network of neurons located throughout the radially symmetric body. The neurons are in contact with one another and with muscle fibers within epidermal cells. These animals lack a head and brain. Invertebrates that display bilateral symmetry such as planar eons, and lids. And arthropods have a brain, a concentration of neurons at the anterior or head end and one or more nerve cords and the presence of a central nervous system. Vertebrates have a central nervous system and a peripheral nervous system. How does the nervous system of invertebrates differ from that of vertebrates? The least complex nervous system is the nerve net of nadarians such as hydras. The nerve net is a network of neurons located throughout the radially symmetric body. The neurons are in contact with one another and with muscle fibers within epidermal cells. These animals lack a head and brain. Invertebrates that display bilateral symmetry such as planar eons, and lids. And arthropods have a brain, a concentration of neurons at the anterior or head end. And one or more nerve cords and the presence of a central nervous system. Vertebrates have a central nervous system and a peripheral nervous system. What is myelin? Myelin forms an insulating wrapping around large nerve axons. In the peripheral nervous system myelin is formed by Schwann cells. A type of supporting cell, that wrap repeatedly around the axon. In the central nervous system myelin is formed by repeated wrappings of processes of oligodendrocytes. A different type of supporting cell. The process of each cell forms part of the myelin sheath. The space between the myelin from individual Schwann cells or oligodendrocyte. Processes is a bare region of the axon called the node of Ranvier. 
Nerve conduction is faster in myelinated fibers because it jumps from one node of Ranvier to the next. For this reason it is called saltatory, jumping, conduction. What is myelin? Myelin forms an insulating wrapping around large nerve axons. In the peripheral nervous system myelin is formed by Schwann cells. A type of supporting cell, that wrap repeatedly around the axon. In the central nervous system myelin is formed by repeated wrappings of processes of oligodendrocytes. A different type of supporting cell. The process of each cell forms part of the myelin sheath. The space between the myelin from individual Schwann cells or oligodendrocyte. Processes is a bare region of the axon called the node of Ranvier. Nerve conduction is faster in myelinated fibers because it jumps from one node of Ranvier to the next. For this reason it is called saltatory, jumping, conduction. What are demyelinating diseases? Demyelinating diseases involve damage to the myelin sheath of neurons in either the peripheral or central nervous system. Multiple sclerosis, MS, is a chronic potentially debilitating disease that affects the myelin sheath of the central nervous system. The illness is probably an autoimmune disease. In MS the body directs antibodies and white blood cells against proteins in the myelin sheath. Surrounding nerves in the brain and spinal cord. This causes inflammation and injury to the myelin sheath. Demyelination is the term used for a loss of myelin. A substance in the white matter that insulates nerve endings. Myelin helps the nerves receive and interpret messages from the brain at maximum speed. When nerve endings lose the substance, they cannot function properly. Leading to patches of scarring, or sclerosis. The result may be multiple areas of sclerosis. The damage slows or blocks muscle coordination, visual sensation, and other functions that rely on nerve signals. In the autoimmune disorder known as Guillain-Barré syndrome, the body's immune system attacks part of the peripheral nervous system. The immune system starts to destroy the myelin sheath that surrounds the axons of many peripheral nerves, or even the axons themselves. The myelin sheath surrounding the axon speeds up the transmission of nerve signals and allows the transmission of signals over long distances. In diseases such as Guillain-Barre in which the peripheral nerves myelin sheaths are injured or degraded. The nerves cannot transmit signals efficiently. Consequently, muscles begin to lose their ability to respond to the brain's commands. Commands that must be carried through the nerve network. The brain also receives fewer sensory signals from the rest of the body. Resulting in an inability to feel textures, heat, pain, and other sensations. 
Alternately, the brain may receive inappropriate signals that result in tingling. Crawling skin, or painful sensations. Because the signals to and from the arms and legs must travel the longest distances. These extremities are most vulnerable to interruption. The first symptoms of this disorder include varying degrees of weakness or tingling sensations in the legs. In many instances the weakness and abnormal sensations spread to the arms and upper body. In severe cases the patient may be almost totally paralyzed since the muscles cannot be used at all. In these cases the disorder is life-threatening potentially interfering with breathing and at times, with blood pressure or heart rate and is considered a medical emergency. Such a patient is often put on a respirator to assist with breathing and is watched closely for problems such as an abnormal heartbeat, infections, blood clots, and high or low blood pressure. Most patients, however, recover from even the most severe cases of Guillain-Barre syndrome. Although some continue to have a certain degree of weakness. What are demyelinating diseases? Demyelinating diseases involve damage to the myelin sheath of neurons in either the peripheral or central nervous system. Multiple sclerosis, MS, is a chronic, potentially debilitating disease that affects the myelin sheath of the central nervous system. The illness is probably an autoimmune disease. In MS the body directs antibodies and white blood cells against proteins in the myelin sheath. Surrounding nerves in the brain and spinal cord. This causes inflammation and injury to the myelin sheath. Demyelination is the term used for a loss of myelin. A substance in the white matter that insulates nerve endings. Myelin helps the nerves receive and interpret messages from the brain at maximum speed. When nerve endings lose the substance, they cannot function properly. Leading to patches of scarring, or sclerosis. The result may be multiple areas of sclerosis. The damage slows or blocks muscle coordination visual sensation, and other functions that rely on nerve signals. In the autoimmune disorder known as Guillain-Barre syndrome, the body's immune system attacks part of the peripheral nervous system. The immune system starts to destroy the myelin sheath that surrounds. The axons of many peripheral nerves, or even the axons themselves. The myelin sheath surrounding the axons speeds up the transmission of nerve signals and allows the transmission of signals over long distances. In diseases such as Guillain-Barre in which the peripheral nerves myelin sheaths are injured or degraded, the nerves cannot transmit signals efficiently. Consequently, muscles begin to lose their ability to respond to the brain's commands. Commands that must be carried through the nerve network. The brain also receives fewer sensory signals from the rest of the body. Resulting in an inability to feel textures, heat, pain, and other sensations. Alternately, 
the brain may receive inappropriate signals that result in tingling. Crawling skin, or painful sensations. Because the signals to and from the arms and legs must travel the longest distances. These extremities are most vulnerable to interruption. The first symptoms of this disorder include varying degrees of weakness or tingling sensations in the legs. In many instances the weakness and abnormal sensations spread to the arms and upper body. In severe cases the patient may be almost totally paralyzed since the muscles cannot be used at all. In these cases the disorder is life-threatening potentially interfering with breathing and at times, with blood pressure or heart rate and is considered a medical emergency. Such a patient is often put on a respirator to assist with breathing and is watched closely for problems such as an abnormal heartbeat, infections, blood clots, and high or low blood pressure. Most patients, however, recover from even the most severe cases of Guillain-Barre syndrome. Although some continue to have a certain degree of weakness. How is the peripheral nervous system organized in vertebrates? There are two divisions to the peripheral nervous system, the sensory division and the motor division. The sensory division has two sets of neurons. One set, from the eyes, ears, and other external sense organs. Brings in information about the outside environment, while the other set supplies the central nervous. System with information about the body itself, such as the acidity of the blood. The motor division includes the somatic nervous system and the autonomic nervous system. The somatic nervous system carries signals to skeletal muscles and skin. Mostly in response to external stimuli. It controls voluntary actions. The neurons of the autonomic nervous system are involuntary. This latter system is further divided into the sympathetic and parasympathetic divisions. The sympathetic division prepares the body for intense activities. It is responsible for the fight or flight response. The parasympathetic division, or housekeeper system, is involved in all responses associated with a relaxed state such as digestion. How is the peripheral nervous system organized in vertebrates? There are two divisions to the peripheral nervous system, the sensory division and the motor division. The sensory division has two sets of neurons. One set, from the eyes, ears, and other external sense organs. Brings in information about the outside environment, while the other set supplies the central nervous. System with information about the body itself, such as the acidity of the blood. The motor division includes the somatic nervous system and the autonomic nervous system. The somatic nervous system carries signals to skeletal muscles and skin. Mostly in response to external stimuli. It controls voluntary actions. The neurons of the autonomic nervous system are involuntary. 
This latter system is further divided into the sympathetic and parasympathetic divisions. The sympathetic division prepares the body for intense activities. It is responsible for the fight or flight response. The parasympathetic division, or housekeeper system, is involved in all responses associated with a relaxed state such as digestion. How is the vertebrate brain organized? The vertebrate brain is divided into three regions, the hindbrain, the midbrain, and the forebrain. The size of each region of the brain varies from species to species. The hindbrain may be considered an extension of the spinal cord. Hence, it is often described as the most primitive portion of the brain. The primary function of the hindbrain is to coordinate motor reflexes. The midbrain is responsible for processing visual information. The forebrain is the center for processing sensory information in fish. Amphibians, reptiles, birds, and mammals. How is the vertebrate brain organized? The vertebrate brain is divided into three regions, the hindbrain, the midbrain, and the forebrain. The size of each region of the brain varies from species to species. The hindbrain may be considered an extension of the spinal cord. Hence, it is often described as the most primitive portion of the brain. The primary function of the hindbrain is to coordinate motor reflexes. The midbrain is responsible for processing visual information. The forebrain is the center for processing sensory information in fish. Amphibians, reptiles, birds, and mammals. What is a reflex? A reflex is an involuntary response formulated in the spinal cord to a specific stimulus. What is a reflex? A reflex is an involuntary response formulated in the spinal cord to a specific stimulus. Who proposed that the left side of the brain has different functions than the right side of the brain? Roger Sperry, 1913-1994, conducted the pioneering research on the different functions of the left side and right side of the brain. The left side of the brain controls language, logic, and mathematical abilities. In contrast, the right side of the brain is associated with imagination. Spatial perception, artistic and musical abilities, and emotions. Sperry received the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine in 1981 for his work.
who proposed that the left side of the brain has different functions than the right side of the brain. Roger Sperry, 1913-1994, conducted the pioneering research on the different functions of the left side and right side of the brain. The left side of the brain controls language, logic, and mathematical abilities. In contrast, the right side of the brain is associated with imagination. Spatial perception, artistic and musical abilities, and emotions. Sperry received the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine in 1981 for his work. What are some diseases that affect the nervous system? Epilepsy, multiple sclerosis, and Parkinson's disease are all diseases of the nervous system. Epilepsy is a nervous system disorder in which clusters of neurons in the brain sometimes signal abnormally. In epilepsy the normal pattern of neuronal activity becomes disturbed, causing strange sensations, emotions, and behavior, or sometimes convulsions, muscle spasms, and loss of consciousness. Epilepsy is a disorder with many possible causes. Anything that disturbs the normal pattern of neuron activity from Illness to brain damage to abnormal brain development can lead to seizures. Epilepsy may develop because of an abnormality in brain wiring. An imbalance of nerve signaling chemicals called neurotransmitters, or some combination of these factors. Parkinson's disease is a progressive neurological disorder that results from degeneration of neurons in a region of the brain that controls movement. This degeneration creates a shortage of the brain signaling chemical, neurotransmitter, known as dopamine, causing the movement impairments that characterize the disease. What are some diseases that affect the nervous system? Epilepsy, multiple sclerosis, and Parkinson's disease are all diseases of the nervous system. Epilepsy is a nervous system disorder in which clusters of neurons in the brain sometimes signal abnormally. In epilepsy the normal pattern of neuronal activity becomes disturbed, causing strange sensations, emotions, and behavior, or sometimes convulsions, muscle spasms, and loss of consciousness. Epilepsy is a disorder with many possible causes. Anything that disturbs the normal pattern of neuron activity from Illness to brain damage to abnormal brain development can lead to seizures. Epilepsy may develop because of an abnormality in brain wiring. An imbalance of nerve signaling chemicals called neurotransmitters, or some combination of these factors. Parkinson's disease is a progressive neurological disorder that results from degeneration of neurons in a region of the brain that controls movement. This degeneration creates a shortage of the brain signaling chemical, neurotransmitter, 
known as dopamine, causing the movement impairments that characterize the disease. What are two of the most common forms of dementia? The term dementia describes a group of symptoms that are caused by changes in brain function. The two most common forms of dementia in older people are Alzheimer's disease and multi-infarct dementia. Sometimes called vascular dementia. These types of dementia are irreversible, which means they cannot be cured. In Alzheimer's disease nerve cell changes in certain parts of the brain result in the death of a large number of cells. The symptoms of Alzheimer's disease range from mild forgetfulness to serious impairments in thinking, judgment, and the ability to perform daily activities. In multi-infarct dementia a series of small strokes or changes in the brain's blood supply may result in the death of brain tissue. The location in the brain where the small strokes occur determines the seriousness of the problem and the symptoms that arise. Symptoms that begin suddenly may be a sign of this kind of dementia. People with multi-infarct dementia are likely to show signs of improvement or remain stable for long periods of time. Then quickly develop new symptoms if more strokes occur. In many people with multi-infarct dementia, high blood pressure is to blame. What are two of the most common forms of dementia? The term dementia describes a group of symptoms that are caused by changes in brain function. The two most common forms of dementia in older people are Alzheimer's disease and multi-infarct dementia sometimes called vascular dementia. These types of dementia are irreversible, which means they cannot be cured. In Alzheimer's disease nerve cell changes in certain parts of the brain result in the death of a large number of cells. The symptoms of Alzheimer's disease range from mild forgetfulness to serious impairments in thinking judgment, and the ability to perform daily activities. In multi-infarct dementia a series of small strokes or changes in the brain's blood supply may result in the death of brain tissue. The location in the brain where the small strokes occur determines the seriousness of the problem and the symptoms that arise. Symptoms that begin suddenly may be a sign of this kind of dementia. People with multi-infarct dementia are likely to show signs of improvement or remain stable for long periods of time. Then quickly develop new symptoms if more strokes occur. In many people with multi-infarct dementia, high blood pressure is to blame. How is sensory information transmitted to the central nervous system? Sensory information is transmitted to the central nervous system through a process that includes stimulation, transduction, and transmission. A physical stimulus 
example light or sound pressure, is converted into nerve cell electrical activity in a process called transduction. The electrical activity is then transmitted as action potentials to the central nervous system. How is sensory information transmitted to the central nervous system? Sensory information is transmitted to the central nervous system through a process that includes stimulation, transduction, and transmission. A physical stimulus, example light or sound pressure, is converted into nerve cell electrical activity in a process called transduction. The electrical activity is then transmitted as action potentials to the central nervous system. What are the components of the circulatory system? The components of the circulatory system are vessels, heart, and blood. The three types of vessels in a closed circulatory system are arteries, capillaries, and veins. Arteries transport blood away from the heart to the various organs in the body. Veins return blood to the heart after it circulates through the body. Capillaries form an elaborate network of tiny vessels that convey blood between arteries and veins. What are the differences between an open and a closed circulatory system? In an open circulatory system, found in many invertebrates, e. g. spiders, crayfish, and grasshoppers, the blood is not always contained within the blood vessels. Periodically, the blood leaves the blood vessels to bathe the tissues with blood and then returns to the heart. There is no interstitial body fluid separate from the blood. A closed circulatory system, also called a cardiovascular system, is found in all vertebrate animals and many invertebrates, in a closed system the blood never leaves the blood vessels. Which type of nitrogenous waste do various species of animals excrete? Since it is highly toxic, excretion of pure ammonia is possible only for aquatic animals. Because ammonia is very soluble in water. Urea and uric acid are excreted by terrestrial animals. Urea is approximately 100,000 times less toxic than ammonia. So it may be stored in the body and eliminated with relatively little water loss. Uric acid requires very little water for disposal and is often excreted as a paste or dry powder. An example is guano, the solid white droppings of seabirds and bats. Do fish drink water? Marine bony fishes such as tuna, flounder, 
and halibut drink sea water almost constantly to replace water lost by osmosis and through their gills. It is estimated that they drink an amount equal to 1% of their body weight each hour. An amount comparable to a human drinking 1.5 pints or nearly 3 cups. 700 milliliters of water every hour around the clock. The gills eliminate most of the excess salts obtained by drinking large quantities of seawater. The fishes excrete small quantities of urine that is isotonic to their body fluids. By contrast, cartilaginous fishes, e. g. sharks and rays, do not need to drink water to maintain the balance of water. Osmotic balance, in their bodies. They reabsorb the waste product urea. Creating and maintaining a blood urea concentration that is 100 times higher than that of mammals. Their kidneys and gills thus do not have to remove large quantities of salts from their bodies. Freshwater fishes never drink water separate from ingesting food. These fishes are prone to gain water since their body fluids are hypotonic. Containing a lesser concentration of salts, to the surrounding water. They imbibe water through their gills to maintain the correct balance of salts in their bodies and excrete large quantities of diluted urine daily. It is estimated that freshwater fishes eliminate a quantity of urine equal to one third of their body weight each day. How is the vertebrate brain organized? The vertebrate brain is divided into three regions, the hindbrain, the midbrain, and the forebrain. The size of each region of the brain varies from species to species. The hindbrain may be considered an extension of the spinal cord. Hence, it is often described as the most primitive portion of the brain. The primary function of the hindbrain is to coordinate motor reflexes. The midbrain is responsible for processing visual information. The forebrain is the center for processing sensory information in fish. Amphibians, reptiles, birds, and mammals. What is myelin? Myelin forms an insulating wrapping around large nerve axons. In the peripheral nervous system myelin is formed by Schwann cells. A type of supporting cell, that wrap repeatedly around the axon. In the central nervous system myelin is formed by repeated wrappings of processes of oligodendrocytes. A different type of supporting cell. The process of each cell forms part of the myelin sheath. The space between the myelin from individual Schwann cells or oligodendrocyte. Processes is a bare region of the axon called the node of Ranvier. Nerve conduction is faster in myelinated fibers because it jumps from one node of Ranvier to the next. For this reason it is called saltatory, jumping, conduction.
What is the name of the seal-like animal in Florida? The West Indian manatee, Trechus manatus, in the winter, moves to more temperate parts of Florida, such as the warm headwaters of the Crystal and Homosa Sa. 271 rivers in central Florida or the tropical waters of southern Florida. When the air temperature rises to 50 degrees Fahrenheit 10 degrees Celsius. It will wander back along the Gulf Coast and up the Atlantic Coast as far as Virginia. Long-range offshore migrations to the coast of Guiana and South America have been documented. In 1983, when the population of manatees in Florida was reduced to several thousand, the state gave it legal protection from being hunted or commercially exploited. However, many animals continue to be killed or injured by the encroachment of humans. Entrapment in locks and dams, collisions with barges and power boat propellers. And so on cause at least 30% of manatee deaths, which total 125 to 130 annually. What is the difference between type I and type 2 diabetes? Diabetes mellitus is a hormonal disease that occurs when the body cells are unable to absorb glucose from the blood. Type I is insulin dependent diabetes mellitus, IDDM. And type 2 is non-insulin-dependent diabetes mellitus, NIDDM. In type I diabetes there is an absolute deficiency of insulin. In type 2 diabetes insulin secretion may be normal. But the target cells for insulin are less responsive than normal. Will wild birds reject baby birds that have been touched by humans? No. Contrary to popular belief, birds generally will not reject hatchlings touched by human hands. The best thing to do for newborn birds that have fallen or have been pushed out of the nest is to locate the nest as quickly as possible and gently put them back. How does the nervous system of invertebrates differ from that of vertebrates? The least complex nervous system is the nerve net of nadarians such as hydras. The nerve net is a network of neurons located throughout the radially symmetric body. The neurons are in contact with one another and with muscle fibers within epidermal cells. These animals lack a head and brain. Invertebrates that display bilateral symmetry such as planar eons, and lids. And arthropods have a brain, a concentration of neurons at the anterior or head end. And one or more nerve cords and the presence of a central nervous system. Vertebrates have a central nervous system and a peripheral nervous system. Do camels store water in their humps?
The hump or humps do not store water, since they are fat reservoirs. The ability to go long periods without drinking water, up to 10 months if there is plenty. Of green vegetation and due to feed on, results from a number of physiological adaptations. One major factor is that camels can lose up to 40% of their body weight with no ill effects. A camel can also withstand a variation of its body temperature by as much as 14 degrees Fahrenheit 8 degrees Celsius. A camel can drink 30 gallons, 113.5 liters of water in 10 minutes and up to 50 gallons, 189 liters, over several hours. A one hump camel is called a dromedary or Arabian camel. A Bactrian camel has two humps and lives in the wild on the Goba Desert. Today, the Bactrian is confined to Asia, while most of the Arabian camels are on African soil. What is the difference between porpoises and dolphins? Marine dolphins, family Delphinidae, and porpoises, family Phocinidae, together comprise about 40 species. The chief differences between dolphins and porpoises occur in the snout and teeth. True dolphins have a beak-like snout and cone-shaped teeth. True porpoises have a rounded snout and flat or spade-shaped teeth. How are nitrogenous wastes metabolized? Ammonia, urea, and uric acid are nitrogenous waste products. They are the result of the breakdown of various molecules including nucleic acids and amino acids. Some amino acids are used for new protein synthesis. While others are oxidized to generate energy or converted to fats or carbohydrates that can be stored. Once broken down, the amino group NH2, containing one nitrogen and two hydrogens, must be removed or the animal will eventually be poisoned. Ammonia is the most toxic of the nitrogenous wastes. It is formed by the addition of a third hydrogen atom to the NH2 group. Both urea and uric acid are less toxic forms of nitrogenous waste but have greater energy requirements for their production. What is the nervous system? The nervous system is an intricately organized, interconnected system of nerve cells that relays messages to and from the brain and spinal cord of an organism in vertebrates. It receives sensory input, processes the input, and then sends messages to the tissues and organs for an appropriate response. In vertebrates there are two parts to the nervous system, one, the central nervous system. Consisting of the brain and spinal cord, and two, the peripheral system. Consisting of nerves that carry signals to and from the central nervous system. Who first demonstrated that blood circulates?
William Harvey, 1578-1657, was the first person to demonstrate that blood circulates in the bodies of humans and other animals. Harvey's hypothesis was that the heart is a pump for the circulatory system with blood flowing in a closed circuit. Harvey conducted his research on live organisms as well as dissection of dead organisms to demonstrate that when the heart pumps, blood flows into the aorta. He observed that when an artery is slit, all the blood in the system empties. Finally, Harvey demonstrated that the valves in the veins serve to return blood to the heart.